Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again. And this time it's my main workbench power supply that I use just about every day. My EEZ BB3 power supply. Now I have done a repair in this, oh it must be a couple of years ago now, but I switched it on this morning to do some testing on the relays of the uh, 1281 multimeter that I'm in the middle of repairing and the uh, BB3 threw up some error messages. So I've kind of half stripped it down at the moment. I've removed a couple of these modules here uh, from the unit and just left one of them in just to try and narrow the problem down uh, because I was getting errors on the display related to one or two of the modules that were fitted. So I'll just power it up now and I'll show you what the error messages are. I've still got uh, just one module in at the moment. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'll just power up. And hear the fan going. And because I've only got the, the channel 3 and channel 4 uh, fitted. There we go. Channel 2 fault detected. But depending what cards I've got fitted this fault that comes up does vary. It doesn't really relate to any one of the cards that are fitted. And sometimes I get a CRC error coming up in the display. And this is what I was greeted with when I opened up the unit and looked at the auxiliary power supply board. This is the circuit board that interfaces to the three mean well power supplies that connect the unit that deliver 48 volts to the system. And the fix is to install a snubber across the live and neutral to any one of the three power supplies, the mean well power supplies in the unit. And apparently that stops the overheating of R4. And there's the resistor soldered back into place. Of course I cleaned it up with my fibre tool and it measures perfectly at 330 ohms still. And I did actually go ahead and hook up the power supply and I monitored that resistor with my thermal camera and it reached 80 degrees C within a few minutes. And that's with the cover off the power supply. So I'm not liking that at all. Okay, this is a schematic for the AC section of that auxiliary power supply. You've got the AC coming in here on the back of the unit and then these connections over here are what goes off to that mean well power supply. All three of them. And here are the control signals for these optocouplers here which can stop and start that output power via these triacs. But here's what I think's going on. This MOC3052 has got to deliver up to 50 milliamps of gate current to this BTA26 and to get that current this R4 resistor has got to burn power. Because I'm getting 17 volts AC across R4 continuously, which is just under 50 milliamps. Now you might be asking, there is actually another triac here and another MOC3062 this time. It's only the soft start signal. So I think this one is only used to get the power supply up and running, then it switches off as this one here takes over. Now I did fit this resistor here in place of R4, 390 ohm and what must be 5, 6, 7, 10 watts, something like that, I'm not sure. And of course it ran stone cold. There's a problem with this board and I've got to get to the bottom of it. The original resistor lasted for years. Oh, but look what I've just spotted. Check that capacitor there. C5, I think. It's only soldered on at one end. That looks like a production uh, issue. So I'm going to have to look at the schematic and see what that's related to. Now, there is a resistor missing here. Well, in fact, there's a whole load. But I think that's how they are uh, stock from production. Well, actually, it's C9 and it's actually just a 100 nanofarad supply decoupling capacitor for this IC here. So no real worries there, but I'll solder it back in place. Okay, so I've run another test. I went ahead and fitted another snubber across the A1 and A2 terminals of the triac. Because what I'm thinking is there's perhaps quite a lot of DVDT noise in the system generated by the SMPS LRS power supplies and that's what's causing the R4 resistor to heat up. 
because when I disconnect the LRS power supplies with these connectors here, the temperature of the resistor drops. However, this number didn't make any difference. Well, I've gone ahead and fitted a rather large 390 ohm resistor down there as you can see and it must be what 6, 7, maybe 10 watts, something like that and it runs perfectly cool. I just can't put a normal wire wound resistor or a surface mount resistor in place for R4. It just gets too warm or too hot for my liking. So I've left both the snubbers that I've fitted, one across the live and neutral of the LRS switch mode power supply and also the snubber I've fitted across A1 and A2 of the Triac. I just think there's too much DVDT noise and it's causing issues and as far as I'm led to believe, like I said, I'm no Triac expert. Triacs are not good at driving switch mode power supplies. They prefer more of a resistive load. So I think this large resistor that I fitted here will do for the time being. However, I think I might actually make a design change to the power supply long term and get rid of those Triacs, at least one of them, and switch it out for a solid state relay. And I think those can handle the switch mode loads, SMPS loads, much better than a Triac can. So is it a design problem with the board? Well, arguably, yes it is because I'm not the only one that suffered problems with the R4 resistor getting hot. There's quite a few other people have as well, especially in countries running them at 240 volts rather than 110. But other people seem to have gotten away with putting a snubber across one of the LRS power supplies. Why it's not working out for me, maybe my LRS power supplies are a slightly different model and that's what's causing the issue. Now why did it come to life? this problem just recently have owned this BB3 for years. Well it wasn't until the other day when I was making some repairs to that uh, Wavetech 1281 multimeter that I was running the BB3 all day and I don't think I've ever done that before. So I just think the R4 resistor slowly got hotter and hotter and hotter throughout the day until the point the resistor fell off. Now I will point out that there's perhaps another reason why it fell off and that might be down to the fact I've had problems with this card here, the DCM220 card where the solder paste from factory was actually quite dry. It hadn't reflowed properly across the board and it just started showing up problems uh, not long after I'd fitted it. And it turned out I had to reflow quite a lot of the parts, the MOSFETs, some ICs, resistors. I had to go over basically the whole board fixing that. And it's a known problem back in the early days when uh, the BB3s were getting produced. So perhaps the auxiliary power supply and the R4 resistor suffered the same problem. Maybe it would have never have fallen off if it hadn't have been for dry solder. I'll never know. But like I said, long term, I think I'm just going to make a modification for my own peace of mind and change out the Triac for an SSR. Well, there it is, up and running again. One small thing to do, a little bit of sealant, I think, on those exposed terminals on that uh, snubber there, just for a little bit of safety. But other than that, this up and running and appears to be working just fine. I've put the thermal camera on that large resistor after about five minutes running and it's just not heating up at all. So all's good there, in and around that area on the circuit board as well. So like I said, I am not a Triac expert. I don't know all the ins and outs of using them. Uh, just the basics really. So if you've got any suggestions as to how I might improve this uh, existing circuit, then let me know down below. Other than that, the only thing I can think of is just to remove the Triac completely and stick in an SSR. And in actual fact, an SSR will go nicely on the back panel there. There is enough room for it. And if I use a logic input SSR, it will couple directly to 
the existing circuitry without much changes. Just have to remove a few components, no cutting the tracks or anything like that and I should be able to get an SSR up and running. And I'd probably like to do that long term so I don't have to think about this at all going forward. But like I said, if you know more about Triax than I do, then let me know down in the comments down below as to what I might try next. Now one thing I don't really want to do, I don't really want to change out the switch mode power supplies for anything else. That's a little bit costly to do that. And they're mean well power supplies, so they're probably the best of the bunch really for reliability etc. But any other hints and tips, let me know. So thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.